Today, we are talking with Greg Smith. He is the broker owner of Remax Alliance in Boulder, Colorado, someone I've known for a long time. He's been in the industry for a very long time and has seen you know, the ups and the downs and, and ultimately is a really great leader of, uh, of his brokerage, has really great advice on how to you know, navigate this time period. So I want to introduce everybody to Greg. Greg, are you on? I am on. Aaron, thank you for the intro. And looking awesome. forward to today. Awesome. Awesome. So Greg, just to kind of get us off the bat here, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, a little bit about the brokerage, kind of get us going here? Sure, I can. I'm uh, So basically, I started in the brokerage in 1998. So I'm on uh, about my 22nd year uh, in in Boulder, Colorado. We actually have, uh, I oversee five offices in Boulder County. Uh, we have about 105 brokers that I oversee. I'm a partner with uh, Chad Oxner and Gene Vaughn and Dennis Sheck. Uh, as far as Remax Alliance as a whole, we have about 805 uh, agents in our organization along the front range. And usually we're, we're usually right around the top one or two Remax uh, brokerages in the, in the country. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, you guys have been, you guys have been doing great last couple of years I've been saying. So it's really great to have you on. So you've been in the industry for a long period of time. Um, you know, you've seen the ups and downs. I, I know you also were in the industry during the uh, recession back in 2008. So, you know, the, the theme of today's panel, uh, we'll kind of start here, uh, is what are three things in your, your opinion uh, that agents should be doing, that companies should be doing during this period of time to really make sure that they're not only, you know, weathering this time, but also using it as an opportunity to make sure that business is moving forward and possibly continue to move up. So what, what would you say those three things would be? Um, so I, I, you know, coming back down to, I think there are three things that are key right now is uh, number one is taking a leadership position. Uh, there's going to be a leadership void in a lot of uh, people's lives right now. And they're looking for folks to step up and help to be a leader, help to facilitate that leadership role. And it can be little things. Um, are you the person that helps to coordinate uh, Zoom happy hours on Friday night with your friends? Um, you know, uh, little things like, uh, am I, you know, and, and Google match meetup, how, however you do it. But um, a lot of people are calling it uh, social distancing right now. And um, one of the key frame, uh, terms that I come up with that is actually is distant socialization. Um, and so I think that's what one key number one is you have to take a leadership. How can I create social uh, socialization in my network and my friends and how can I keep people together and how can I be a leader in that space? Because somebody has to be a leader in that space as far as uh, keeping people networked. Um, number two, um, I think it's that we need to be we need to be good listeners. We need to be reaching out to our spheres, our friends and and listening, not just talking, but listening to what they have to say and, and giving them a sounding board and not being there to counteract what they have to say or um, come back with what we feel is right or wrong, but just be empathetic and open. So that, that's really key to people. I, uh, I was making calls last week and I, I called about 105 of my network just to you know I try to do about 100 contacts a week I think that's a good number good goal right now and um, I noticed that those calls took about six minutes and 30 seconds six minutes right around six minutes and 30 seconds each I will say those are longer conversations than I normally have so that's why we just have to be out there to listen um, the third one is kind of an interesting point and my agents probably getting uh, tired of me saying this is we have to be fabulous right now. Um, you can't, you know, there's a book, Good to Great. That's, that's wonderful. Great's wonderful. But uh, good, in, in that book, uh, be, good, being good is what causes us not to be great. Well, right now, I actually say being great is what causes us not to be fabulous. And you have to be fabulous right now. So, and way up, what I mean by that is every interaction you have with somebody, make sure as a real estate broker, especially that they are feeling better 
after that interaction with you than before that interaction. So if you're going to make a, a comment on Facebook and you're going, you feel that you have to um, prove your point, I guess is what I say, is our, when that person reads that comment you leave, do they feel fabulous that you left that? Do they feel good about themselves? And I think it's a time right now that we have to uh, step beyond ourselves and we have to be fabulous to those around us and then making sure that we're making others uh, feel great, even if we're not feeling great right now. We, it's like the, you know, if you work at Disney, um, they used to say, Walt used to say, when you come into the park, you have to put on your costume. You are Mickey Mouse that day or you are Minnie Mouse that day. And so I think as real estate brokers, when we're communicating with the community right now, we have to put on our broker, our broker costume. And so by what I mean by that is, you have to, A, you have to be a leader. Um, you have to be, um, be empathetic. You have to be listening. And then third, you have to be fabulous right now. You have to step above, above and beyond yourself. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's interesting. One of the things that you and I talked about, you know, a couple of days ago was the importance of being authentic, but also having communication with buyers and sellers that there isn't necessarily an agenda there, but really talking to them from a human perspective, you know, understanding what they're going through and identifying with that. And so authenticity seems to be a theme that is important, you know, that you've talked about in the past. So one of my questions would be, how do you balance effectively that authenticity, that, you know, reaching out to somebody without an agenda and yet also balance the business side, you know, the nature of what we're doing here. How do you balance that well during this time? You know, Aaron, I think they, they play well together. Um, I mean, our business actually is all about authenticity anyways. And so, you know, when I call out to you and I'm just really saying, how are you? What can I be doing to help you? Uh, that is the, the key on there. And uh, you're not, you can't be looking for that deal right away in, in the marketplace right now. You are actually making a deposit in um, that emotional bank to people. So I think you are balancing it. You are making that deposit now for uh, transactions that may happen later. Now, you know, it's funny. We, we talk about that though, as far as transactions, I, I mean, I, my day is complete because right before this call started, one of my brand new brokers, uh, that just started a couple months ago, just said, hey, Greg, I finally did it. I got my first house under contract yesterday. So she was being authentic, just reaching out to her sphere and made my day because she, I got that text right away. So stuff's still happening. And by being out there and being authentic and just listening, you are, you, the business will come as well. Even though that's not the goal, the goal is to help folks, um, but you're gonna see because you're helping, the business will come in. Yeah, absolutely. Now, one of the things that I know uh, you also have talked about in the past is the importance for an agent to be informative, to provide value to their buyers and sellers, to be the voice of what's going on in the market, to, to educate um, in a way where you are that professional in the market to, to your database, to your people. So during this period of time, you know, as the market is changing and there's a lot of uncertainty, how do you see agents should be leveraging their, their communications right now and educating their buyers and sellers and, and their database? What, what type of communication can they be doing there to be that voice, that, that person in the market that's helping uh, uh, their database understand what's going on? So, you know, what we've chosen to do and, and where we're working on is we've we did a monthly newsletter as an organization in the past and what we did, and we have updated that we now do weekly. And um, we are providing the stats and just, and the pure stats of what's happening in the marketplace is, you know, what's the new listing to under contract ratio happens to be a statistic that we track uh, showing activity we have, we're, we're tracking that as well. And the numbers are very interesting. And we, and we provide that based on a bandwidth of pricing to the consumer on a weekly basis. And it's interesting in our marketplace, um, we're very blessed in Boulder, Colorado, in this area, just be frank. I mean, our average sales price is a, is a million dollars. Um, but beautiful weather. <laughs> what's that? You also have beautiful weather. We do have beautiful weather. I could show you outside right now. It's, it's gorgeous actually. Um, but uh, zero to zero to 500,000 
um, our in Boulder County, our lists, our new listings to under contract ratio was 103%. So um, it was, we actually had more properties go under contract than new listings that came on. So that consumer that was saying, hey, should I put my house on the market right now? It's not us saying, uh, just guessing what is the case. We're statistically giving them the numbers. Whereas if you're at the million to 1 million to 1.5 million in our market, there were, uh, I, think, I believe, seven new listings that came on last week. Zero went under contract. So in that marketplace, um, you, may, you may not want to come on the market right now unless, unless you need to. So providing the actual statistics and giving people insight into that is valuable. Um, we also have been uh, providing information of showing the consumer what has happened through different recessions throughout the, the history. Uh, looking at comparing uh, to 2008, 9-11, other, other instances within the market that have been, had similar characteristics to what we're seeing right now, um, just to give our, our uh, consumers and our clients insight into what's happening. Because you got to remember, a lot of the headlines right now um, are just small, are just taking snippets. Goldman Sachs predicts recession in the second quarter. Well, a lot of the, the headlines are forgetting to also say, but Goldman Sachs also predicts a V-curve recovery and expects um, the, end, the fourth, third and fourth quarter, quarter to be strong depending on the length of, this, of the virus and how long it impacts us. And then they expect a very strong recovery in 2021. So you're, you're, a lot of our consumers are getting small snippets of the news Whereas we as brokers have the opportunity to present the rest of the story. So, and I'm trying to do that on a weekly basis. Yeah, absolutely. And, and one of the things that, um, you know, I know about you is that you've been in the industry for a long time. You've seen the ups and downs. Can you talk about a little bit uh, about what you were doing during the down period <laughs> when we're looking at the 2008 time period and up? What were some of the things that you were doing through that period that, you know, not only were you able to weather the time, but you were able to stay successful and, and keep those relationships going. What were some of the things you did during that period? So in 2008, what, what allowed us, a um, couple things. I mean, it, it is number one is we, we doubled our contacts. Uh, you know, I'm a big, a big sphere person as far as the people you, you contact and reach out to. We also uh, doubled our marketing. I just have to say it the way it is. A lot of Brokers recruit, were recruiting, were choosing to cut back and come inside, and we didn't. We came outside. Uh, I got certified as a, a CDPE, which is Certified Distressed Property Expert, during that time period. Um, I do have. I actually became a, a primary REO broker for Bank of America and others. So. Um, I don't think we're going to have that happening right now, but I, what we chose to do is look and see, you know, where did, where did the cheese go? Somebody moved our cheese. Where did we go? And we saw where the cheese moved to. So, um, and I think that's critical right now. You have to look and say, look at the market and be engaged and look to the future. Where could it go? Um, what, what are the, these market dynamics? What could they, could they be causing? Is, do we see, do we see opportunity where others don't? And that's the key right now is, is looking at that and positioning yourselves. There's no reason. <laughs> I did it a week. I did it not this week and weekend before. I reached out to NAR and I got recertified as a um, distressed property foreclosure expert. Do I think that's going to happen? No, but it's a six hour course and I could get my six hours of CE and I did it on Sunday and I was done. Um, I think I was done in three hours, but I got my six. So, you know, it's the, that's where you start, right? You start thinking ahead as a broker and you start preparing, um, not that this might happen, but it could happen. So, you know, Aaron, to go back to what you said is we, we doubled down and then we look and see where was the cheese and we positioned ourselves accordingly and where we thought it, we might need to be. And not all of those things played out, but um, some of them did and it allowed us to excel. Yeah, it's actually, I find it very interesting using that time period to actually gain a new certification or a new skill or, or learn a new, uh, learn, learn a new process during that time. That was something very interesting that you're able to carry over to now. So when we're looking at this time period, especially when we think about our processes that we have in place, our CRMs, our database, you know, 
our marketing that we're doing, you know, this time period by the very nature that we're all home right now, you know, we're, we're not out and about as much as we used to be, you know, how important is it right now that, you know, we look at for ways to organize, to look at our systems, to look at our processes, to possibly look at our, you know, certifications that we have, if there's other opportunities, how important is it that we look at this time to really hone in on those things right now? Well, as, and you and I talked about this when we talked previously, it's critical. There is not a better time, A, to make sure your database is 100% accurate right now. Um, and so you're, you've, got, you've got all this opportunity to call everybody right now anyway. So that person that you haven't talked to in three years, there is no better excuse than to be able to call right now and say, hey, Jim, I was just thinking of you. You know, I know what's going on right now, and I just wanted to reach out and check in and see how you are, the, you and the family are doing. It doesn't seem weird. You haven't called in three years. They're actually like, oh wow, I was. I appreciate you calling because a lot of people are connecting that haven't connected in a long time. So right now, getting your database 100% accurate is key right now. Um, and then I think looking at other opportunities and seeing how you can grow your business. Um, how is your marketing? Have you, look, have you put together your strategy as far as your Instagram strategy, your Facebook strategy, um, your retargeting strat strategies that you're utilizing as far as your, the consumers are concerned? Um, have you looked at your products uh, like ActivePipe? And the, are, is this a great time for you to just um, bring folks in and start utilizing the products that you can start getting consumer behavior and insights on. And, and right now it's, it's not, a, there's no better time. I mean, reality, we can be allocating what 10, 15 hours a week to those to working on our business. Um, right now, normally let's, let's, let's say it the way it is. Um, April, May, June, at least in my marketplaces are some of the, usually some of the busiest markets we have. And of course, um, I call this the, the Christmas, December uh, virus to a certain extent, because basically my market is stuck in December. It's, it's just a December market over and over again. It's Groundhog Day, which actually gives us the opportunity to work on our businesses, which um, I think is huge because when we come out of this, um, as we, and if that V curve ends up being like a lot of people predict it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be big and we're going to be ready. I mean, let's face the facts, Aaron, we still are in a marketplace where by most predictions, we're running a shortage of about 4.5 million houses. So it's still going to be simple. Adam, supply, Adam Smith supply side economics. It's still going to be a tremendous market when we come out and when we look at the core principles. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's such a critical thing that you're talking about here about working on your business during this period of time. You know, there's if you think about back to when uh, the market crashed back in 2008, for those who were able to invest in the market during that period of time, for those who could do that and continue to invest during that time, actually benefited from that time period than if it didn't happen at all because they were able to put in that time. And you mentioned things like you know putting a, a uh, investment to the emotional bank when you talk about the relationships, right? Mm -hmm. Putting that time in now, um, organizing, working on your business right now, organizing your database, organizing your marketing, putting that time in now, the investment there. You know, using this time period, if you can do that now, you could theoretically be better off going forward than you would have been if this period didn't happen at all. So I think there's a lot of opportunity there. You know, obviously, this is a very solemn time for many people and being conscious of that and being aware of that. That's where the human side comes in that we've been talking about, you know, making sure that, you know, we're, we know what's going on here. A lot of people are sick. A lot of people are scared, but at the same time, making sure that we use this opportunity as an opportunity to make sure that our businesses are moving forward and, and we're investing that emotional time and business time into things. Now to shift gears a little bit, you talked a little bit about utilizing market data as a way to communicate effectively, to, to show knowledge in the area and, and, and educate your database about what's going on. When you look at this period of time, how does data make a play right now? What, you know, everybody talks about data, but in this particular period of time, you know, what are you seeing the opportunities for agents and for companies to utilize the data that's out there? And how do they find that? How, how do they, they, they collect it and deliver it in a way that is tangible and digestible by their audience? 
Well, I mean, it's, it's, there's, there's a lot of different ways to, to, to pull the, the data. Um, we use a couple different vendors that we pull data from to actually get information for, for us that we found very beneficial. The MLS is actually a great source of data. We, we download the information on a pretty much a daily basis and we're updating that. I mean, um, I have to say that the old uh, Excel spreadsheet is not a bad collector of data if, if you keep if you keep track of it on a, a daily basis so we do do that um, and it's and it's providing those key points to folks um, there's uh, that help to help to get it and then just the uh, fair housing or the uh, housing index and stuff along those lines so you can uh, is very valuable that you can pull from too so there's there's definitely sources out there and you can pull it from we use I work with a organization called KCM that pulls a lot of stuff for me and I pull stuff from them great insights so makes sense yeah I mean there's many different sources out there it's thinking about okay what is the stuff that people are going to find helpful and relevant now because at the end of the day, we're all trying to provide value to our client base in some way or fashion. And that changes a little bit from a market where, you know, people are actively buying and selling to, you know, some of the audiences and others are kind of waiting to see what happens. And so bigger opportunity to utilize data in a way that can inform and, and keep people, uh, you know, keep people going during this, this uh, unpredictable time. Now, one of the things you and I talked about in the past, what I thought was really interesting was, and I mean, obviously this is a very tough question and no one really knows what things are going to look like, but there's a lot of outcomes that will come out of this time period. And you talked about how, you know, you talk about this V, but you also mentioned some interesting things about, you know, because people are at home all day, right? Because of this period of time, is that going to change their buying habits? You know, are they thinking about, do they want to live elsewhere because of this? So can you elaborate a little bit what we talked about of how you see the market possibly changing from here in terms of buying habits and, and uh, uh, you know, what, you, what you're seeing is going to happen going forward? You know, um, none of us know. That's the great thing. And, and I think the first thing when you talk to your clients is, um, I, I am a strong believer as my folks say to me, they say, hey, Greg, what do you think is going to happen in the marketplace? And I say, you know, I have my ideas. But more, important, more, more importantly, what do you think is going to happen? And I like to listen and get a sense there. So I, I will start off with that. But number two is uh, we all talk about Ford. Um, as far as when we talk to folks, real estate is about change. That's what, that's what causes uh, shifts in the marketplace. So family, occupation, recreational, dreams. I mean, I think that's a good analogy to, to talk about what could happen. So let's talk about family. Um, <laughs> Simple fact is we have people that are locked together right now and um, for an extended time period. So most likely nine months from now, we are going to have lots of babies. It's just a simple fact. There's going to be lots of babies out there. Um, number two on the not such great side is there's going to be husbands and wives and uh, partners that decide, you know what, we don't like each other anymore. So we're probably going to have a lot of divorces and separations happening. Um, that's just reality. And I, after you and I talked about that jokingly the other day, um, I saw an article came out about it that actually um, uh, divorce attorneys are very busy right now. So, uh, so the occupation, that's, that's key. Occupation. We are all learning to live, work from our houses. Uh, businesses are um, learning how to work with their employees from, from their houses. So we could see a big shift in how uh, people work. And then I think that could shift as far as uh, where people live. Because if I'm able to work virtually now and businesses are working virtually, I don't have to live seven miles, 10 miles, 20 miles uh, from the office that I work at, I can now be a thousand miles away. And so that we could see certainly migration, the shifting of patterns happen there. Um, recreation, uh, I think that goes more along what I just said, but it's a flight to lifestyle. I think we're gonna have a flight to lifestyle that could happen as a, as a result of this. I'm gonna combine recreation and dreams is a lot of, when you have a big event like this that causes people to turn internally on themselves and look inside, they, they say, you know what, I've always wanted to live in Boulder, Colorado. Let's just say I've always wanted to live in Boulder, Colorado. I always wanted to have 
over 300 days of sunny year and be able to go hiking and skiing and mountain biking and all the things that I love. And so you could see that there's going to be, there's going to be a flight to lifestyle and folks are going to choose to go live there for two reasons. One, they can because they out, now they can work virtually. Number two, they've always dreamed of doing it and they've had a major event in their life that caused them to say, I'm not going to wait for my dream. I'm going to make my dream now. So that's going to cause shifting and moving in, in the real estate market as well. So I, I expect when we do come out of this that we see actually a surge in housing. I, 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 I strongly believe it's going to be a housing-led recovery because of some of these key basics that we've talked about is that the, the under, underlying um, supply, supply side economics and strength is there. Uh, interest rates, 3.25% uh, um, right now or yesterday. They could have shifted today. Um, it, it changes like that. But, you know, I think in November, December, we were at 4.75%. So let's think about that. Just from, real, just from an interest rate standpoint, I'm, uh, my cost of housing right now decreased 33%. So if I bought that same house today, that was I would have purchased in November, December for 500000 I can buy, now buy that house based on payment, like what I'm paying on a monthly basis for 400,000, 380,000. I mean, based on my payment. Um, so it's, 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 so that's another key piece to that. So I, I expect us, Aaron, to be quite strong when we come out, when we come out of this. It's, uh, it's, it's very interesting insights and it'll be interesting to see if there's a new boomer population that come out of, uh, the COVID boomer population. Uh, real quick, we have a couple minutes left. There is a Q&A button um, in the Zoom if you wanna ask any questions for Greg here um, or for the Actified crew, um, please put them in there. We have time for a couple. Um, but yeah, Greg, this is, uh, it's been very helpful to get your perspective here. And, and like you're saying, it's, we, we don't really know what's going to happen after this, but I think your insights here are pretty on point, especially with thinking about how things are going to change virtually and digitally how we do our businesses where we realized hey we actually can be very effective uh working in a digital platform or virtual platform and yet i think the important part of something that you've been talking about so much about is that authenticity that human side making sure you keep that so balancing the two right now is so important but also realizing how is this going to play going forward? How can I utilize this going forward? And then focusing on lifestyle, right? Can I effectively do my business and maintain the lifestyle that I'm noticing, you know, so important to me now? So to jump in here, I think we got some questions. Uh, we got a question from Leslie here. You referenced uh, Keeping Current Matters. Um, of which I, I'll subscribe to. Are there any other resources you use to frequent, uh, they use frequently that you would recommend? You know, I, I would say our other primary resource is the data from the MLS. We are, we're finding that actually that's the most valuable. Like I, I like the broader data that you get from um, like keeping current matters and things along those lines. But I will tell you um, if I were to track like my Facebook um likes and things along those lines where I'll see a hundred people like something or something along those lines. It's actually the local key data. So the more that you can go in and do like what I talked about, like the under contracts to um, new listings uh, for your market based on bandwidth of pricing and things along those types of statistics, it's that hyper local um, statistics that people are looking for that they can't get anywhere else. And quite frankly, we as the brokers have to do the heavy lifting to aggregate and put together that data. And that's why it's more actually more valuable. Um, and you're going to find that your, uh, your public or the folks that you're helping, that's what they're starving for is what's happening in my neighborhood. Makes sense. Hyperlocal, um, very important and utilizing that MLS data that, you know, most consumers do not have the ability to do. Um, can be effective. I'll take one more question here. We're talking about a 33% uh, percent difference in purchase power uh, based on the rate change. Um, can you explain a little, elaborate a little bit more about what you're talking about there? Yeah, so I'm, I'm happy to. Um, and I think it's just huge for investors right now, guys, too. And, and um, so here's, I'll go a couple things and I hope not to go too long and I'm drawn out here, but here's a couple things happening. 
investors drop buy on cap rate, right? So, um, so you're buying, so I'm, that's one option I'm going to look at, but I'm, so is if a cap rates 5%, 6%, then my, uh, if interest rates are at 3.25%, then there's a tremendous opportunity there. So I'll talk about that second, but I'll go with your 33% purchase power. Most consumers don't buy price. Like if a house is listed for $500,000 um, and they're planning on living there for five, six, seven years, this, this blip that's happening, I'll call it a speed bump that's happening on prices may come down a little bit, may not go down a little bit, may, may go up a little bit, whatever. It doesn't actually matter. But when I have an interest rate um, that is 33% less than what it was just a short time ago, as the consumer, I'm actually buying a payment. So what I pay for that house is what my mortgage payment is on a monthly basis. And if my interest rate goes down by 33%, then I'm actually getting a 33% reduction on my payment that's happening on a, on a monthly basis. And it doesn't correspond exactly that way, but it's pretty close. So that's where I, uh, right now, anybody was thinking about buying back in December, now is the time to move forward. Um, rates are an absolute low. And, and they, you know, when we saw them oscillating last week because there was a large spread between the T-bill and mortgage-backed securities because there wasn't a market for the mortgage-backed securities, um, the quantitative easing that took place this week because the stimulus package has brought that spread substantially closer together. So rates are going to, should be quite good for a while. And this is a, a unique opportunity for our buyers to buy right now because uh, this, these are historically, historically the lowest rates we have ever seen. So um, that's, you know, uh, going on what you just said there. So that's our, our buyers. Um, I think there's a second opportunity for investors. Investors are looking to buy a property at a, a long-term basis. If I can buy a property now and I can get a, let's say a 4% rate because it is an investment property, or I can buy a property as a first, as a buyer that I'm, I ultimately want to keep as an investment property, which is even better, kitty condos, things along those lines. Um, but if you can go ahead and do that and you can get a rate at 4% and you can actually be at a 6% cap rate on that rent, well, then you have a 2% difference between your, your rent, your interest rate and your cap rate. So if you put 20% down, that means you have a large leverage factor. Let's say it's 20% down. So it's a five uh, leverage factor of four. So you're going to pick up another 8% on that 6%, which is going to give that person a 14% cash on cash return right now, just because rates are lower. So there's some real opportunities out there as us as agents to um, provide solutions for our, our buyers. And so right now, I think it's a unique time that as far as for investor buyers and for uh, home buyers, um, just, be, just because rates are where they're at. And not to mention, some, there's a lot less competition out there as far as buyers go. There's fewer showing. So you don't have to not be in those multi-offer situations that you might've been in a month ago, two months ago. Absolutely. And any buyers that you know that are interested now, um, definitely even more higher quality because you're not getting a lot of that kind of just coming in the door, not getting a lot of just people looking. So, hey, uh, Greg, it's been such a pleasure talking with you. Very informative. I really appreciate you taking the time with us. Um, it's been very helpful. Hopefully the uh, audience here found this very helpful. I will be sending out the recording so everybody uh, can, can review all of these very interesting findings. And Greg, I appreciate it. I, uh, I'm excited to come back out to Boulder at some point and uh, spend some time with everybody. Um, but thank you. Be safe and uh, hope the family is doing well. Hey, Aaron, one last thing. Hey, if anybody has any questions or wants stats or anything, um, I am an open book. I think if you were in my marketplace, you'd realize that I actually send all my newsletters to all 1,600 brokers in the area to tell them to please use and share. I think we are not individual brokers right now. We are a broker community. It's important that we're, we're not Remax, we're not Color Bank, or we're not Compass, we're not Keller Williams. We are a broker community. So right now it's critical that we all work together. And you, you're welcome to email me, Greg, G-R-E-G -E dot Smith, S-M-I-T-H at Remax.net. And I will share everything I have. It's because um, right now I think it's critical that we, we all work together. So um, Aaron, I appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. Great catching up, Greg. Thank you, everybody. My pleasure. Bye. Have a good one.